Hi. Over the past few days, we've been testing out the DJI Rise Tello, and I've promised that I'd give a bit of a review as to my thoughts on what it's like as an educational drone or a little bit of a toy as well. So here's, here's the drone itself. So it is quite small. I did read somewhere in, in in the advertising that it was about the size of a smartwatch. Now I'm not sure how big your smartwatch is, but it's about double the size of mine. So not quite that small, but it weighs in at about 85 grams, which keeps it below the 100 gram limit, which makes it a micro drone as far as the Civil Aviation Safety Authority of Australia is concerned. Now it is, so that makes it a lightweight drone, so relatively low on the risk profile in terms of damage that it could do if it runs into something. So let's have a look at some of the features on it before we have a look at the app first. So it's got the, the battery that comes in and out. There's the battery there. Now you can charge the drone by either an external battery charger or you can charge the battery while it's sitting in the drone. Now I find this a little slow. I haven't tried the external battery charger, but to charge this battery from near flat took just over an hour. So that is a fairly long period of time where your drone is out of action if you don't have that external charger. Now other, other features of this one, so it does have the built-in FPV or first person view camera. So that's a forward facing camera. Now this camera is actually really good. It's, it's five megapixels, so something similar to one of the old school iPhones, I guess, takes quite nice photos and videos as well. Now it actually does also have visual positioning. So that's on the bottom of the drone there. And essentially what this is, is another camera that's looking at the ground all the time and that's what helps keep the drone stable. Now, unfortunately you can't access that camera to take aerial photos vertically down but it is it is really good in terms of making the drone hover and keeping it nice and stable there even if you take your thumbs off the control now this particular this works particularly well sort of within the space of about one meter to three to four meters if you go any higher than that then the camera has more difficulty focusing on the ground and so that stability isn't quite there as much now it also has trouble if it's a really, really highly reflective surface. So as long as you're flying, say on a, on a gym floor or something without bright lights on, generally we find this to work quite well. Now other features, we do have the propeller guards, which are obviously around the propellers there. So that's going to help reduce any impact or scratches on the wall, for example, if it's knocking into a wall or hopefully students as well. Now, one thing that I'm not quite happy about this is the sensitivity in terms of the motor cutout rate. So if you do crash this drone, or if you knock into something, it doesn't necessarily stop the propellers. Now, if it lands upside down, the propellers are going to stop, but you can still bump into a wall without those propellers stopping. And we even tried using a set of Kevlar gloves and putting fingers inside into the propellers. Again, don't do this without Kevlar gloves, but we did try that and it still didn't stop those propellers. So I, I do think that that's a safety aspect that needs to be worked on in terms of making that a little bit more sensitive and cutting the motors a lot sooner. But having said that, the propeller guards do work quite well and in any case, you shouldn't be sticking something into those propellers. In terms of changing out the propellers, I do find that a little bit clunky in that there's a tool in particular. So it's not just a case of some of, some of the other micro drones just have pull off propellers. So this one does actually require a, a small tool that comes with it to do this. Now this also has a good side in that the propellers aren't gonna come off easily, but it is just another thing that you sort of need to keep in your back pockets in, in case you do need to change the propellers if they get chipped. Now we, tr we did a flight test of this to see how long it would actually fly for. So it, it does say that it will fly for about 13 to 14 minutes. We tested this to fly only to the point when the battery warning came up. Now I don't like flying drones past 20%, so I wanna keep 
keep my batteries up above 20% as I know that that helps with the longevity of those batteries. Um, so it's a little bit hard to tell exactly what the percentage of the battery is within the Tello app, but as you have a little, a little diagram of the battery so you can see roughly where it's at. So we flew it from a full battery down to the battery warning, which is at 20%, and that gave us 10 minutes of flight time, which is fairly good for a drone of this size. We weren't really pushing it. We we're taking a couple of photos and flying backwards and forwards a little bit. Now the, the advertised flight length is probably using, using the drone without the propeller guards, for example, in optimal conditions and probably draining the battery all the way down. So that's probably why you see the discrepancy between the value that we get and the value that's actually advertised. So moving on to having a look at the, the app that you fly with for Tello. So the Tello app, it's really quite a good functional app. It's a, it's a good experience in terms of flying this drone. It is easy to fly. It's very stable with that vision positioning system. And the camera is good, like I mentioned before. Within the app, there's a number of different camera options in terms of filming. So you can film 360s. There's a bounce mode. I'm not sure exactly why you'd want to do that, but it's definitely something that's that's a bit of fun to play with. And you'll certainly see the quality is really good there as well. So if you're looking for super duper entry level to get students engaged in doing film and photography, I think that this is a good option to do so. For mapping a little less in the sense that it just doesn't have that camera looking down, but it depends on exactly what your application is. We found the, the app very, very responsive and certainly the drone is very quick to connect to the, to the tablet or iPad as a controller. We've done this on both Android and iPad mini and both seem to work quite well. Now it does connect through the Wi-Fi. So some of these smaller drones work on Bluetooth. This is working on Wi-Fi. So you need to connect through settings first and then move over to the app. Now the downside of this is that if your tablets or iPads are defaulting to connect to say a school network, then anytime the drone turns off or you change your battery, then the drone will then the the network or the Wi-Fi will automatically default back to the standard network. In which case, every single time you change the battery, you need to go back into settings to connect the Wi-Fi before you go into the drone. So that's a little bit of a pain. To get around that, all you need to do is to forget the other Wi-Fi network, and it will then default to the one that you've set up. So this is also what you need to do if you're working with multiple drones. So you want to set a tablet to a drone and get it to forget that there's any other network out there and that will help with that. While the connection is rather quick, one of the challenges we then found was that it also drops out a little bit if you're, if you're not flying for long. So say you connect up your drone, but you're sitting there, potentially you're a teacher, you're giving instructions to your students on what the next stage of the activity is. And if you don't activate the app soon enough, the drone will turn itself off. Now it's a good safety measure and it saves the battery. That's all well and good, um, but it, it does happen a little bit too quickly for my liking. So just another thing just to be prepared for is that, is that rapid turn off. But once it's on, connects well, and, and I, I think it's, it's a really good, good little drone to fly for that price point. Now there is an extension up on top of the base Tello. There's the Tello Edu. Now this allows you access into the SDK or the software development kit. So this is really stepping into probably more at the upper level high school when you're looking at potentially making your own apps around what you want the drone to actually do. You still can access scratch-like coding with the basic version of the Tello. And there's a couple of different apps that will allow you to do that as well. So primary school and certainly entry level high school and depending on the application of the drone, you're probably good with the block coding. If you wanna go into the SDK, then you're looking, looking to purchase the Tello Edu, which is 50 to $60 or so more expensive. So there's my first cut at a few different things that we've found about the Tello. I do think it is a, it's a good little drone. It's a, it's a good entry level photography drone. Um, but again, it all comes down to the application that you're interested in to figure out if this is the one that is going to work for you 
and your school. I will update you further when we know more about the coding apps as well and we'll also talk a little bit more about swarming when we've got our heads around exactly how that works too.